Now, as you mentioned earlier, it is the second anniversary of uh, Jubilee. When this government took over, they declared they would focus on what they called economic diplomacy. But the frequent terror attacks have complicated Kenya's image abroad. So, how do the many diplomats out there still convince the world that Kenya is the place to be tonight? KTN special correspondent Alex Chamwada takes a closer look at how Kenya is handling this security crisis in the eyes of the world. South Coast, one of Kenya's key tourist destinations, is where the diplomats had met for a week-long conference to sharpen their skills in marketing Kenya. They had discussed strategies to assure the world that Kenya was safe and that terrorism was a global challenge. They had mooted ideas on how to use their diplomatic skills to have investors troop into the country in line with Kenya's push for economic diplomacy. That is why I'm fighting so hard for Kenya ways to obtain direct landing rights in the U.S. To invest in our country, as an example, you win by cutting down your production costs. We win by ensuring that there is employment creation for our people and transfer of skills. India has achieved full security, so I think we can learn from them. In terms of um, mechanization and irrigation. In the next few years, we are going to pursue aggressively the African market. And therefore, as the president speaks, you will hear of intra-Africa trade, Africa number one, Africa number two, Africa number three, because that's where the market is. If you are looking for money, then you go to people with money. We want Microsoft to come and set up their manufacturing here. After the South Coast retreat, they flew to Nairobi. They had been on their final day of the discussions on the role of the Kenya diaspora when the unexpected happened. The Garissa campus attack. Some of the diplomats had spelled out their anti-terrorism strategies. And the strategy must come from us. If they have information which they can share with us, they share that quickly. The Turks have learned how they are able to isolate terrorists within the same faith. When we have cooperation between uh, the Kenya intelligence system and uh, the Turkish intelligence system. It helps Kenyans to be trained and to learn how to do that. The Garissa attack occurred a day after President Uhuru Kenyatta had sensationally rubbished a travel advisory issued by the United Kingdom. Wenyewe wanakuja kushinda golf Windsor every other afternoon, lakini wakisimama pale wanasema musiende Kenya hakuna usalama. Tell them Kenya is safe is as safe as any capital in any country in the world. Analysts say while terrorism is a global challenge, Kenya's diplomats should go beyond that narrative and tell the world how the country was dealing with it in order to inspire confidence among investors and tourists. They must understand what our national security policy talks about. Our interests as a nation, it speaks about our thinking in the geopolitics of the region. It speaks about our engagement with other international community members. They must all understand the strategies that we put in place as a country. One, to fight crime. Two, radicalization. Three, extremism. And of course, fourth, which is the totality of the three that I've mentioned, terrorism. The president's outbursts have once again raised the big question. Are travel advisories misunderstood? Take the recent terror alert by the United Kingdom issued on the 27th of March this year, for example. The British government was specific on areas within 60 kilometers from the Kenya-Somalia border with Garissa among the spots in that alert. And the question is, were British tourists told to avoid Kenya? 
Kenya is as safe as any other country. The only problem is the narrative. The travel advisory from the UK does not restrict UK nationals from visiting Kenya. At the moment, it has restrictions on our border with Somalia, parts of Mombasa Island, and that is all. Repeat tourists know about Kenya. They'll continue to come, but there is a challenge, yes, that with travel advisories, tour firms may not be able to get insurance cover for some of the tourists to visit areas for which the government of the UK has issued advisories for essential travels only. What's your strategy to counter that narrative? We address meetings and conferences, engage with the parliamentarians, engage with the government officials, engage with the private sector. Some of the tourists I met in South Coast had their narrative too. For me, very bad if the president tells the people we can stay without foreigners. I mean, you, the tourism is one of the biggest points in Kenya. If there is no tourist, I don't know what happen, will happen with Kenya. When this uh, Al-Shabaab attacked Kenya about one year ago, there were some cases here, even in Mombasa, Nairobi, you know that thing. Then they said, be careful in Kenya, but they never warned the people, don't go to Kenya. As much as they don't want their taxi drivers to come, President Obama has said he's coming. So <laughs> A Kenyan diplomat who sought anonymity said, quote, travel advisories are not necessarily bad because even locally, Kenyans sometimes are advised by local authorities on the areas to avoid in case of security alerts, end quote. Observers say a look at the British travel information to aid citizens indicates that it focuses not only on Kenya whenever necessary, but also on other parts of the world. However, Kenyan authorities insisted that some of the alerts were not genuine. We strongly believe that these advisories are driven by considerations other than security. And the question is, when issuing security alerts, does the UK share what it knows with the government of Kenya? We are particularly concerned that the countries that have issued advisories are considered friends who have been part of our counter-terrorism effort all along. The British government says terrorism represents a shared threat and requires a shared response and that the United Kingdom provides an extensive and ongoing program of counter-terrorism assistance to the Kenyan government then comes in the role of the media. During the meeting at the Leisure Lodge Resort in South Coast, media experts sought to challenge the narrative that journalists were being unpatriotic, hence contributing to Kenya's bad image abroad. A columnist had written the, the headlines. The headline was the, un, the most unlivable city in the world. And that uh, journalist, was, that columnist was talking about Kenya. Patriotism does not mean blind support for the government. Patriotism does not mean that th things are happening and you close your eyes to them. Patriotism for me is loving your country, that when something is wrong, you are ready to scream and shout about it so that it can be corrected. It would be good if the president, Mr. Uhuru Kenyatta, came to, to Germany and meet the German Chancellor, Angela Merkel, for instance, and talk with her. That is in television everywhere, and that is a good marketing for Kenya. Security in Kenya really just lies around the terror threat. And as soon as we can tame the, the terrorist threat, then we, we are, uh, so we are often are taking off. To reap the benefits of economic diplomacy, analysts say Kenya should up its game in anti-terror war, anti-corruption war, and have a clear communication strategy. Now, this year, there are two major opportunities for Kenya to market itself. First, the July Obama visit during the Global Entrepreneurship Summit. Secondly, the World Trade Organization meeting that will take place in Nairobi in December, a meeting that will bring into the city at least 6,000 delegates. It will mean a lot for business. We estimate that it will bring to Kenya a, a 
you know, all the ministers of trade of the 163 countries that are members of uh, WTO. As they return to their various destinations, the Kenyan ambassadors and high commissioners will be navigating through a mixture of narratives and observers say the key is to be strategic and stick to the best diplomatic narrative in Kenya's interest. For KTN, I'm Alex Chamwada.